Well, I've been using the Nikon ZF for quite a while now, um, professionally, not as a YouTuber. And I have to make that distinction. Um, I, I'm just going to start out by saying, you know, I, I noticed a lot of, of YouTubers, um, not photographers, and I'm going to make that distinction saying, you know, it's great, but it has this, so I can never use it, or it doesn't do this, I can never use it, or this is confusing, so I can't use it. This is a great camera. Um, you know, if you're an actual person looking to buy a camera to do photography instead of collect gear and become a YouTuber, um, this is a spectacular camera in every which way, shape, or form. I have no issues with this whatsoever. Now, I, I'm a professional commercial photographer, and I've been shooting for 42 years. And I started out with Nikon. Love the system. You know, I used the uh, Z7 II, the Z6 II years ago, um, and I loved it, but I, I wanted to move to Leica when they added the internal memory so I can have backup. And now I shoot all my commercial work, well, at least 90% of my commercial work with the Leica M system. And I absolutely love it. Um, but I do have situations where I need autofocus. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. There's no getting around it. Sometimes I'm just going to need this to do a better job at the job at hand. So I tried them all. I tried the Leica SL, you know, trying to stay in the Leica ecosystem. Uh, great camera, don't get me wrong. Just wasn't made too big, too heavy, too obnoxious. Um, and, I, you know, s switching to the M system, I wanted small, lightweight, and, and, and flexible. And this camera offered that. And, you know, the first thing I did was bitch about the plastic lenses. This is the 28 I have on here now, and I have the 40. But I also have the, the 50S, the 1.8S, and the 85 1.8S. They're great lenses, and it, they fit fine in this camera. You know, I know this, like, oh, it's not retro enough. It doesn't match the aesthetics. It's, we're photographers. <laughs> you know, I understand that, that the appeal of a good-looking camera is the appeal of a good-looking camera. I get that part. But when it comes down to it and you're shooting to get the job done, what does the aesthetics have to do with it? You know, for me, giant lenses are not a thing. I, I don't want to have to carry something like that. I wanted small, lightweight, easy to use, um, and this camera offers that. There are quirks that, that YouTubers pick out on the camera, and I, I don't get it, honestly. I, I don't know how else to say it, but I did. Like, what kind of perfection do you need as a YouTuber, not a photographer, but as a YouTuber for a camera to be good enough for you? Um, it's ludicrous to me some of the comments that come out of people's mouths about this camera or any other camera for that matter. Uh, like for me, the SL, it's big, it's uh, bulky, and if I bought the Leica lenses with it, it's gigantic. Um, same thing with uh, Canon and uh, Nikon. My God, they're... Uh, 50 1.2 and 85 1. not in a million years. I'm just not carrying that stuff. Now I know that that there are photographers that have to have that because this is their look and this is the look that they want. <clears throat> it's just not for me. But using the 85 and 50 1.8 S on this camera, it works perfectly. I know that people are bitching, oh, it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing, blah, blah, blah. Now I'm thinking that Nikon's gonna go and, and make some beautiful retro lenses for this. Um, I would hope anyway, and I think it's going to be fantastic. 24 megapixels, believe me, I'm going to shoot 24 megapixels every day of the week when I can. Even on the Leica M, I take it down to 36 megapixels when I'm not doing a commercial shoot because I don't need 60 megapixels all the time. Um, for this, you know, the 24 megapixels is fine. And when you look at an image the way it's supposed to be looked at and the way normal everyday clients look at their images, you know, they're not pixel peeping, zooming in, and, and looking at the fine details of an eyelash. Um, only YouTube photographers do that. Um, and I'm just going to say YouTubers, uh, because they're really not photographers, they're professional YouTubers. Uh, even the ones that claim to have jobs and do professional work are, are subject in, in some points. Um, there are some great YouTubers that are actual photographers, I'm not saying that, but most of them are not. Um, but for me, I've been using this camera. I, you know, I don't check battery life or anything like that. I have three batteries. <laughs> like, it's just, if you're going to be using a camera professionally, 
you have extra batteries. It's just that simple. Now, for the Leica system, I have three batteries. I've never used more than one at a job because the Leica, the, the, on the Leica M, it's, the battery life is so damn good. Now, the 28, I just started using this. I like it. I don't like plastic lenses. Um, I never will. Um, and, and I'm hoping, like I said, that, that they come up with you know, a, a retro line of lenses for this. I think it would be really nice. Aesthetics of a camera, um, you know, I know it's important to some people, and I know carrying a nice camera is, is, is nice. It's a, it's a nice added benefit to something that works as well as this does. Um, but if you can't make this work and create beautiful images with it, even with your perceived quirks of the system, just find another job <laughs> um, because it really is a, a special camera and, and the technology in it um, and the image quality is fantastic. Uh, the only issues I have with it are some color quirks uh, in different lighting situations, but it's just me not getting used to it. I love the Nikon colors I, I, and, and I've, all the cameras, like my pick for cameras is Hasablad has the best color science I've ever seen in my life. There's just no better. Um, Canon's a close second and Leica's a close second. The Canon R5, I just thought the color science was spectacular in that. But again, I wanted a, a, a camera that was, that made me work a little bit. I don't want a camera to do everything for me and not to have to think other than pointing the camera in the right direction. Um, and with the Leica system, I have that. I have to manual focus. I have all the stuff that I want personally. It's not for you, maybe. That's fine. But when I do need an autofocus system, and it's, you know, maybe 10% of the time I want an autofocus or need an autofocus, <laughs> I'm just so thrilled with what Nikon's done with this camera. Um, you know, with everything, uh, I'm enjoying this camera. Now, playing with your camera and getting to know it and getting to know how everything works will make most of the, the hang-ups that people have with this camera go away. You need to learn how to use your system and, and learn how to make it work for you. And the more I use this, and I'm using it quite a bit, the more I'm enjoying what they did and how they laid things out. Um, you know, they didn't do this blindly. And uh, granted, not every camera is perfect and not every camera company knows everything. But the way they did things on this camera, I'm impressed with. I, I like the way everything works. I just had to, you know, learn to use it and, and learn to use it to my benefit. And now I'm happy. You know, I know everybody's like, oh, I need this six custom buttons or ten cut. Like, do you use those? <laughs> like, I've never, I, I've used one custom button um, on the Leica and I use that for exposure compensation because it doesn't have a dedicated exposure compensation dial. This one has an exposure compensation dial. Um, the shutter speed, the ISO, everything is just right here. Like, what more could you possibly want? Now, you know, I never, like, oh, I shoot manual, but on my auto ISO is always on. Like, you're making the camera make the decisions for you. And for me, that's just, Oh, it just will never happen for me. Learning how to use your camera 100%. Now, don't get me wrong, I shoot an aperture priority once in a while, or I put it on ISO once in a while, when I'm just going out and having fun and just want normal images. But when I want complete control of my artistry, artistry, um, I put everything on manual and I adjust everything. Um, but this camera, I, I, this is gonna be a classic, it's gonna be a cult classic, because it's really that good. Um, I, I love the body. Now, I considered the R8 for a while, and I'm thinking, wow, I'm just going back into the same BS that I was in before with a big heavy camera, and then I'll have to get the 85 1.2 and the 50 1.2. I don't want to carry that stuff. I just don't. So for me, you know, personally, as a professional photographer using this Canon professionally, not as a YouTube person, I'm 100% all in on this camera. I, you know, I, I, I get comments because I've done quite a few videos on this, and, and I always get comments like, you know, did you make your dime this week off doing another Nikon video? I, I don't make any money off of this. I bought this. Um, I bought it used, as a matter of fact, and it was like three weeks old or six weeks old or something. I bought it used, and I got a really good price on it. Uh, but 100%, I'm in with this camera. It's it's just a beautiful system. It works fantastic. I do love it. Um, you know, if I had any, any, any complaints about it, it would be the screen, because I just don't want a side swiping screen. Um, but I get 
that people want to use it for selfies or vlogging or, or whatever you do. Um, you know, I get that part, but you know, I like to look down on a screen if I'm using it that way rather than off to the side, and that just bothers me. So, I, you know, I, most of the time it's closed anyway. I just don't even use it. I use the viewfinder. Um, but when I'm in the studio, I'll flip it around and just keep it flat and just shoot like this. Uh, it's not unprofessional to look at your screen that way. You have to remember, like, you know, we shot at the, the Hazablads. We never were up like this with our Hazablad. Um, you know, I did have a, a prism finder on my Hazablad one time, and I just hated it. So I went back to the, you know, the waist level. And I'm always looking down like this at my Hazablad. Um, we were professionals, believe it or not. Um, but, you know, the youngins on YouTube thinks it's unprofessional. And, and even the older ones that are our pro pro photographers uh, make fun of people for shooting like this. There's, there's no, you can shoot any way you want. If you get a better image than the next guy, who cares how you got it? I don't care if you didn't even look, just go like this. <laughs> if it's a great image, it's a great image. You created it. Anyway, that's my update on the Nikon ZF. I do love this system. Um, lenses, I have the 28 uh, plastic lens, the 40 plastic lens. And I just have the 50 1.8s and the 85 1.8s. I think that's my whole kit that I'm going to stay with um, with this system because it, it covers everything I need. You know, I may consider a better uh, wide angle, which would be probably the 35 or the 20 1.8s. Um, but other than that, I'm I'm happy with the the kit the way it is. Anyway, if you have any questions about this camera, please leave them below. But I did want to do a follow-up because I do get a lot of questions about this. And no, I'm not making any money off this. I'm just telling you about products I love. And this is a product I love. Uh, this, this one's going to be uh, a long-time success for, for Nikon, I'm sure. Thanks for watching, as always.